All right, so we're here at the Mountain Valley Farm. I'm Jay Taylor from the CDAE Vermont Studies, University of Vermont um, 295 Renewable Energy Project Group. And we're here with Gabe Geiger and John Donaldson. And we're going to talk about Gabe Geiger's renewable installation. And then we're going to go check out John Donaldson's. You have actually kind of an interesting story because you had something going on with your neighbor, right? You know, we originally uh, thought about doing this. We, we contacted, we wanted to keep it local, so we contacted Alturas. Uh, right here in Waitsfield. And Dave Gavitt who lives up on Scrag Mountain and myself um, had a price to install the same setup of arrays. Um, and they had said that if we both did it, they would take $1,000 off of the price. You know, three incentives. That was one of them, uh, $8,700 back from the state uh, of Vermont. And then there's a 30% off of the federal income tax as well. Wow. Um, Plus what, whatever you generate and put back into the grid. Right, yeah, that's kind of just like the the added bonus to the whole thing. But you weren't dealing at all with the fabricator, you were only dealing with the installer. Just with the installer, which was nice, and they automatically they went to the state and uh, got my $8,700 discount. They went to the town and got all the permits that were necessary, uh, contacted all the neighbors. Um, I didn't have to do anything. It was, a, it was kind of a really uh, cut and dry deal. I just got to give them a check. Now, your installation is pretty new. What can you tell us about its capacity or what you're expecting from it? Uh, there's 24, 210. Uh, watt panels. I'm um, hoping to do 75 percent, 65 to 75 percent of our house use. It would definitely offset 100 percent of our barn use. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for. And if it does work the way it's supposed to, like I said, then I'll, I will install more in the future to do 100 percent or more of the farm use here. Have you had an electric bill since, you, since it came online? I have. Yeah, our electric bill was cut in half. And Green Mountain Power is great. The guys that came out to they took the meter off the, on the house and installed a new one that works for solar, uh, my uh, power being sent back to them. Right. Uh, their installer was a great guy. He explained how everything worked. You know, I, I was mentioning to John before, I haven't done anything as far as changing appliances out. Uh, if we do have to, if a, we have a refrigerator or something that fails, because most of our appliances are older, I will definitely change to a more efficient uh, appliance. But I am uh, more cognizant of the lights that I leave on and uh, com computer or anything like that. I just got paying attention a lot more to it. I really want to get my electric bill down there. Okay, so we're here at John Donaldson's house and this is John Donaldson, the man himself. Your installation is a little bit older than um, Gib Geiger's, but what can you tell us about it? Uh, it's about the same size in terms of capacity, but he's actually got less panels than I do because his technology is a year older. His the capacity of his panels is uh, 210 watts, and mine's 170, so it's, you know, it's gotten that much better in a year. Um, I decided to put mine on pedestals rather than low to the ground uh, for a couple reasons. One is I wasn't sure what the snow load was going to be, and uh, having it up this high, they do shed snow pretty quickly, but it, it, it piles up pretty good. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really want to be cleaning snow up here. And the, the pivot point is on the top of the pedestal, so to adjust the tilt or the angle to the sun, which you should do about four times a year to get, the experts say you'll get 15 or 20 percent more mm -hmm. uh, output. That's a chore and, mm -hmm. and a nuisance. What I did with this, this summer was work with a metal fabricator and we together sort of designed a very simple system where he essentially moved, moved the mechanics down to uh, eye level. So now I can adjust them by myself. The, the whole concept behind geothermal is, it, it, at least in this design, you, you use heat pumps, which is old technology, but they've adapted it now to uh, um, use water from the ground as a source uh, to, uh, to provide heat. That process, they can extract from 50 degree well water, uh, 120 degrees. Uh, and they're rated at about three to one efficiency. So for every every unit of electricity they use, they generate three units of heat mm -hmm. or cooling in the summer. What would be your cheapest electric bill versus your most expensive? I think it was July or August, it was $2.60. And $2. So that sorts of things we be conscious of in terms of appliances or um, winterizing the house. What sorts of things did you do for efficiency? We did, um, I mean, the main thing is, in this day and age, builders uh, know how to build houses tight. 
and so you do a lot of things to prevent air filtration. Mm -hmm. It turns out that, that geothermal is um, very electric intensive. Mm -hmm. uh, so while we're making about, uh, had just a little more than one year um, of experience and we, we made about 5,600 uh, kilowatts. Wow, over the year? Over the year. Uh, that was only about 25% of my total consumption mm -hmm. because these guys do use a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm convinced that, and the numbers will prove that it's still much more efficient than heating with a conventional boiler system. This is Dennis Derryberry. Hello. So you have a PV array outside, but inside you have this geothermal system. Um, where is it in its progress? Is it set up yet? It's not set up. Our uh, plumber has been here connecting some of these pipes uh, even just this week. So how are you feeling? Are you a little nervous to see how much it's going to work for you? Are you pretty optimistic? Well, I, uh, I do have a friend just nearby that has a system that's been in for one winter, and that's John Donaldson. Mm -hmm. And so he's told me that, yeah, it, it works. It's a, it's, a, it's a technology that I'm unfamiliar with. Not a lot of people are using it, but uh, I have faith that it's going to work the way it's supposed to do. I want to see it work, though. I want to see it how, if it's loud. I want to see how often it runs, how often it's idle, and you know, kind of how the timing goes with uh, it heating up the house and how long it takes to cool back down to the to the thermostat point when it mm -hmm. kicks on again. Now how hands-on have you had to be in this process? We, we wrangled with uh, how, how big to go with these units based on the expected uh, heat loss that the, you know, the, the house would shed to the outside during the winter. Um, I've been pretty involved. Um, they wanted the extra. Our contractors wanted to give us a bigger system and we thought that we could save some money and save some power, this runs on electricity, um, if we went with smaller system and we're intending to supplement our heat needs with uh, the wood stove that I think I showed you up in, mm -hmm. in the main floor. And you know, that's kind of centrally located, it'll, it'll disperse out to the most of the house and we may be able to not use this as much as you would if we didn't have that. We have uh, domestic solar hot water, we have uh, two panels that are about uh, five by eight feet on the south facing roof. And so on sunny days and in the summer, that really cranks this up. I think right now our tank temperature is showing about 60 degrees because it's nighttime and it's freezing outside. But uh, I'm sure it was warmer during the day. Um, we're also we're going to use electricity to buffer this up to the using temperature, which is about 120. Um, so, uh, you know. Uh, Throughout the course of a day, this should heat up and, you know, on its own, it could get up to about 95, 98 degrees, just even in these marginal kind of sunny days at the end of, at the, end of the summer, early, you know, getting on towards winter.